So we begin the letter to the Ephesians today uh, and reminds me of just not that long ago when we started going through the letter to the Galatians, I mentioned about how Paul jumps right into the, I can't believe you're doing this, you're giving up the gospel for this, where as opposed to this, we have the initial greeting and they says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has bestowed on us in Christ this beautiful uh, benediction recognizing the power of Almighty God and how God is moving in their lives. And I was just struck by this, this blessing that he starts with. God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Not some, not most, but every spiritual blessing that God is pouring out His blessings upon us. Just want to go through this. This just struck me so powerfully this morning. As He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, you were chosen to exist at this moment. Not like when your parents came together, God said, okay, I want them to exist. But before the foundation of the world, before God even created the earth, He chose for you to exist in this time and in this place. So that means that we were made for these times. And we were made to be holy in these times. Sometimes we look with nostalgia at the past and say, oh, wouldn't it have been better to be back then when to be able to be a saint? But we're called to be a saint here and now. That from the foundation of the world, He chose us to exist here and now, to be holy and without blemish in His sight. Now, as I read that, I was thinking, yeah, I ain't without blemish. Uh, and I'm working on holiness, but still not there. And I'm sure all of you can say the same thing. But, God sees us, as it were, as we will be before Him in heaven. As He has purified us completely, we will be holy and without blemish in His sight. And so that's why He created us. We were predestined to be with God for all eternity. That is our destiny. Every single person on this earth was made predestined to be with God for all eternity holy and without blemish before Him. Now, of course, by our sins, by our choices, we can choose not to go in our destiny. We can choose to go to hell. We can choose to reject God forever. But He made us, He predestined us, He made us so that we would be with Him forever, holy and without blemish before Him. In love, He destined us for adoption to Himself through Jesus Christ. Just to, reminding myself of the um, adoption laws of the ancient Roman world, the time of Jesus, that much like today, unfortunately, uh, if somebody, uh, somebody's wife became pregnant, he could force her to have an abortion. Or even after the child was born, if for whatever reason the father didn't want that child, they could leave it out for exposure. Could be that it was malformed, could be that it was a wrong gender, could be whatever, whatever reason whatsoever, they could basically allow that child to die. And it was perfectly legal, much like today in many places. But, but, if they were to adopt a child, in no way ever could that father ever reject that child. And the thought process was, with your own biological child, you might not know what you're getting, but you knew what you were getting when you adopted this child, and so you have to be faithful to this child. And God adopts us to Himself in Jesus Christ. In love, He destined us for adoption to Himself through Jesus Christ. He's saying to us, in language that the people of St. Paul's generation would understand, God can never reject us. 
God will be faithful. Even no matter how much we turn away from Him, He will be faithful. Ultimately, He will allow us to reject Him for all eternity, but He will never reject us. In love, He destined us for adoption to Himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of His will for the praise of the glory of His grace that He grants, granted us in the Beloved. In Jesus, He's allowing us to praise Him. And then this other last part of it. In Christ we have, be, we have redemption by His blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accordance with the riches of His grace that He lavished upon us. He's washed away our sins. By what He did on the cross, dying and then rising again, pouring out His love there, He's promised us the forgiveness of our sins if we but grasp that grace, if we but allow Him to transform us, if we but cling to His mercy. May we truly recognize this great grace that God is pouring into our lives, who we are in Christ Jesus. And may we allow that grace to transform us, to make us holy and without blemish before our God.